Just get in there. Yes. Get in there. I thought I was gonna do this video without a fan, but you're just gonna have to deal with the extra noise because it's absolutely intolerably hot. It is over 33 degrees of Celsius, which is I think 95 of Fahrenheit. And in the next two days, it's gonna be close to 40 degrees of Celsius. So I think that's 103 degrees of Fahrenheit. So you know, if, if I melt by the end of this video, that is your confirmation that I am, in fact, the Wicked Witch of the West. I'm melting! Melting! Oh, what a world! What a world! Hello, friends. This is Miro, and welcome to my channel. Today, I wanted to talk more about Hoyas, which is a topic that I rarely cover on this channel, except every other video, or sometimes every video, but... Today I wanted to talk about 10 Hoyas that are really worth your money. Six months ago I made a video called 10 Rare Hoyas I Think Are Overpriced. And to be quite honest with you, it is one of the most disliked videos on this channel when you count the likes and dislikes. I think it has a 95% ratio. Usually they have around 98, 99% likes. So this has a sufficient amount of dislikes. Do people not want to know that some Hoyas are overpriced or that their plants are overpriced? Let's just not get into that. Okay, I'm just actually, I am gonna get into that. I'm just gonna mention something. One Hoya from that video, Hoya Compacta Jody Silver, that one. In that video, I said the price is from three to six hundred dollars. That was about six months ago. When I checked in 2019, this Hoya was two hundred dollars and there was a one year waiting list, approximately one year, maybe a bit more or less, depending. So there was always this imbalance in terms of supply and demand for this Hoya. There was always a higher demand than supply. Since then, the price of this Hoya increased to three to six hundred dollars. And now, six months later, after making that video, the price for one node is $2,500. Take that in. Actually, the only listing I was able to find for this Hoya is with two nodes for $4,000. So I guess you are saving $500 if you're buying two nodes, or you are wasting $3,800, depending how you look at it. Anyways, so before we actually even continue with this video, I would like you to tell me, what would you buy for $4,000? Let me know. Maybe it is Hoya Compacta Jody Silver. I'm not judging, I'm just saying it's, the price is there. I mean, it's there. I don't even know how to even express where the price is at. This video is definitely not about those Hoyas. This video is about 10 Hoyas that I think are worth looking into if you are someone who wants to have maybe Hoyas that are not so common in collections, if you find species rather than cultivars more interesting. So I'm going to tell you what they are. And incidentally, these are on my wish list. I know, I just made a Hoya haul, I know. And there is a next wish list, I get it. Let's move on. Also, the order of these is quite random. They are not ordered in price from low to high or how much I like them or not. It's just a random list. I mean, it's not a random list, but the order is random and I think I'm just gonna tell you now what they are. First Hoya on this list is Hoya Uenanensis. Hoya Uenanensis was published in 1936 by Heinrich von Handel Mazetti. This Hoya is native to South Central China and it has been found in Northwest Yunnan province in China. That is where it gets its name, Uenanensis. It is only found in three places and I really tried very, very hard to locate them on the map, but it seems that from the date of publication up until now, the places changed the name. And actually, interesting thing that I found out is the names of the rivers in China have different names, depending if it's the upper stream of the river or not. So for example, in the original publication, it is said that this Hoya was found near the Mekong River in China, Yangtze River in China, and Salween River in China. When I tried to locate those in the northwest part of the Yunnan province, I could not really find them, and that's because 
those are the upper parts of the river. So if you're interested in locating those on the map, the upper parts of the Yangtze River are called Yinsha River, the upper parts of the Mekong River are called Langzang River, and then the upper parts of the Salween River are called Nuiyang River. Hopefully I pronounced all of those with 30% of accuracy. Let's not even go for 50. One thing I could not locate on the map is the three villages where it was found. So if you can find them, I would be very grateful to know because I tried Google search, I tried going up the stream of all three rivers, I zoomed in, I even went to different type of map and I could not really find them. The villages in question are Lota, Tseko and Lodre. Again, I think this is like 10% of accuracy in pronunciation, so it, get, it gets worse. However, what we do know is the elevation on which it has been found. In the original publication, they say it's from 1700 to 2100 meters, but later I found it's actually found on 2200 meters. So that is pretty high up there, meaning that this is a cool growing Hoya, and I even read that it may be one of the most cold resistant ones. When we talk about the way this Hoya looks, or the way the foliage looks, it personally reminds me of Hoya Li or Hoya Thamsoni, and I previously did say that Hoya Li does remind me of Hoya Thamsoni, so it's no surprise there that they kind of look very similar. When I was reading more about Hoya Yuanansis, and this is by the way how my Hoya investigations go, I started reading about Hoya Li and Hoya Thamsoni, and it seems that Hoya Thamsoni has a very wide range in which it grows, and possibly there are several different variations or clones, and it's possible that even Hoya Li is one of them. So may, it may be in the future that we no longer have Hoya Li, or that something else is Hoya Li. That is still something that has to be looked into. I did not say anything here. I'm not saying they're the same at all. I'm just saying what I read. There is a possibility. That's all. But when I was looking into the differences between Hoya Li and Hoya Yuanansis, it seems that the coronas are in fact different. So I don't think those will be grouped together because that is like a major difference in the Hoya world. It's minor to you and me, but it's a major difference in the Hoya world. And why I like this Hoya so much? The flowers are absolutely gorgeous. I can't even describe the color. To me, it's like pearly purple. Is pearly purple a color? Does it look pearly purple to you? Pearly purple. Try to say that 10 times fast. Pearly purple purple purple. <laughs> pearly purple purple purple. <laughs> Anyways, that's the reason why I like it so much. It looks gorgeous to me, the flowers, and I am afraid that this is not the easiest Hoya to flower because of the elevation in which it naturally grows. It seems that Hoyas that grow in those high elevations really need cool nights or really need that temperature drop in order to bloom. I have not bloomed Hoya Thamsoni nor Hoya Li, and you know, Hoya Li is quite new, Hoya Thamsoni I had for, I would say, a year, and it still didn't bloom. I had peduncles, I had tiny buds, but they never made it through. It may not be so easy to bloom, we'll see. And probably the reason why it didn't bloom is because it's always hot in this room, it's always above 22 degrees of Celsius. But maybe, you know, this summer when it gets up to 40, and then it normalizes to 20, the temperature drop will be enough. We don't know. Another interesting thing, Hoya Mekongensis, which was named after the Mekong River, is in fact a synonym for Hoya Yuanansis. Now, the price. It's not very expensive, in my opinion. It's about 40 euros. In my opinion, it's not super affordable, let's get that clear. But it's not something that will break the bank. Too bad. It will break the bank. It will crack the bank. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, there is a very interesting story for the next one, and it has little to do with Hoya, but I'm still gonna tell you that story because I found it fascinating in a disturbing way. The next Hoya is Hoya Wang Viengiensis. I think there are a couple of more that are difficult to pronounce, but then the rest are fine. Hoya Wang Viengiensis was published by Mikhail Roda and Nathaniel Simonson, or Nathalie Simonson, and it was collected in 2010 and published in 2012. As the name says itself, it was collected in town Wang Vieng, which is in Laos, 
And there are some very interesting things about Wang Vieng. Because, you know, when I look for Hoyas, I like to see where they grow. I like to see the climate. But when we Google Wang Vieng, that's not the first thing that comes up. Oh, boy, no. Um, Wang Vieng. I'm just going to Google it now. If you Google Wang Vieng and you go to images, you get the Guardian article, which says, Laos town. Known for drunkenness and tourist deaths, cleans up its act. What do these botanists do when they go for explorations, I wonder? Of course, after reading that title, I had to see for myself what is it that is causing the tourists to die in Wang Vieng. It, it, it's people being stupid. It seems that this is not happening as frequently anymore, but like from 2011 to 2016, this was a real issue. So it seems that people were dying because of drunken tubing, which I honestly did not know what tubing was, because my life is not exciting in that way. My life is exciting in different ways, and all those probably relate to plants. And anime, and movies, and TV shows. I lead an experience-rich life. Apparently, in Wang Vieng, you could rent this rubber tube and you could go down the river, down the actual river, and basically what would happen, you would start, and there were like bars on the, sh on the shore, and they would rope you in. You would get drunk and go back in that tube in the river and go down the stream again un until, you know, you arrive to the next bar, and then they rope you in, you get drunk a bit more, you go back into the river, you go down the stream, you get the idea. I don't know who thought this was smart. Apparently, it, you, there used to be 11 or 16 bars there. So imagine, you know, this experience going down the river, being roped in into 16 or 11 or whatever the number is, bars, getting drunk, going back. Apparently, I think in 2011, 11 people died. And that, oh, that was not all. They were also selling drugs. I don't know if I can say that. I think I can say that. You could buy laced pizza, which is, and you know, all, uh, all sorts of things aside from alcohol that would make your trip even more hallucinatory. I really don't know how no one figured out this was going to be a bad idea and end up in so many people dying. Literally, you know, you go down the river, it's... Just don't drink and go down the river. Not very smart. Aside from that, Wang Vieng seems to be a wonderful place. It looks very nice in the photos. The reason why I like Hoya Wang Vieng Yens is, is, is not because of the name. It's because of the velvety leaves, the pubescent leaves that it has. And it seems to me that they have like a raised veining. I'm not really sure how I would describe it, so I'm gonna insert a photo. To me, it looks like nothing I have among the Hoyas and the flower is white. Similar looking, it reminds me of kinda all white Hoya carnosa. It looks wonderful. There is nothing there not to like, except for the drunken tubing. In terms of price, this one is also not that expensive. It's around 40 euros. So I think it's something that, you know, can be bought. And then you have to just learn how to pronounce it. Next Hoya on my list is Hoya Pretori. And the photo for this Hoya is actually from Jackie's Jungle in the Desert on Instagram. Thank you, Jackie, for letting me use the photo. This Hoya was published by Friedrich Anton Wilhelm Mikkel. Just what happened with just having a first name and last name? It wasn't a popular thing back then. Anyways, it was collected in Sumatra and published in 1857. Now, I could not find Hoya Pretori in Q's database, but it is registered in IPNI, which is International Plant Name Index. In Q's database, they say that Hoya Pretori is a synonym for Hoya Lasiantha. But when I looked into that, that doesn't seem to be true. There seems to be a difference between these two Hoyas. One of them is they are found in different places, and the other is that Hoya Lasiantha seems to be more difficult to grow than Hoya Praetori. Aside from that, there are, of course, morphological differences that Hoya Lasiantha has a flower that is slightly different in color. To me, it looks more of a paler orange. In Hoya Praetori, the orange is really visible, and then there is also a difference in the color and size of the corona, but also the size of the flower is different. It seems to me that the corolla of 
Hoya Lasianta is a bit bigger. In any case, the reason why I love this Hoya is because of the flower. I mean, what's there not to like? It is pubescent, it is orange, which is a color that I really like in flowers, and the center is a different color. It is a brownish, reddish color. I'm not really sure how to classify that. And it's supposed to be very long lasting, up to two weeks, which is similar to Hoya Lucky. And I'm really getting into the thinner leaved Hoyas. I cannot lie, I don't know why. For some reason, I find them extremely beautiful. I have a Hoya that was gifted to me as Hoya Donomensis, and I really hope it's that because, again, gorgeous, and it has those thinner leaves. You know, they're nothing spectacular, but I love them. I can't explain it. There's something about them. I really think this is a thing with all plants. There just comes a point where something switches in your head, and you're like, yes. It happened to me even with orchids, with Phalaenopsis out of bloom. I'm like, yes, love it. Love the leaves. What's there not to like? I call this the advanced stage of plant collecting. It's terminal. There's no way out after this. Once again, this Hoya is not terribly expensive. It is around 30 euros, and supposedly it is easy to grow. Oh, the next one, 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 the next one. This next Hoya is something they did try to get this year, but unfortunately, Carolina, who has it, did not have a cutting to sell. And I was very sad because I think it's beautiful. The flowers are out of this world pretty and it is Hoya Denisi. This again is not expensive, not super rare, but there is an expensive version which we will get to a bit later. Hoya Denisi was published by Paul Irvin Forster and David Liedel in 1993. However, this Hoya was discovered much earlier than that. It was discovered in 1965 and I do have to look up the name of this expedition just so i can get it right so it was collected by a person called tc withmore i could not find anything about tc withmore i'm sorry tc withmore whoever you are i appreciate you discovering this hoya it was collected on a royal society expedition it is said it was discovered on solomon islands and the localities are Kualo Range, Mountain Galego, and Guadalcanal. I was able to locate Guadalcanal, so I assume that the rest of the localities are there. After all, it's an island where it cannot be that far away. The elevation on which it was found is 1067 meters, so this is definitely one of those cool growing Hoyas, and just the fact that it grows on Solomon Islands doesn't really tell you that it is a cool grower. If you want to read more about this expedition i found that there is discussion published apparently this happens you publish discussions it's called a discussion on the results of the royal society expedition to the british solomon islands protectorate 1965 if that means anything to you if you want to read that. It is available for, I think, 50 euros. So I think it would be better just get the Hoya instead because Hoya is 20 euros. So just don't read that. I don't think you will find anything that interesting. Get the Hoya. Trust me, I make good decisions. There is a variegated version of this Hoya and that one is much more expensive. It is around 100 euros. I really don't see why we would go for variegated version because to me, the regular one looks fantastic. The flowers are absolutely wonderful. They are kind of very dark pink slash purple. I don't know colors. The next Hoya is another one that's not easy to pronounce. It's Hoya Thuanthian Huensis. This is my first or second favorite on this list. I think it's first that is realistically obtainable for me. The credit for this photo goes to Peter Plants. Thank you so much for sending the photos. They are wonderful and congratulations on having and blooming this spectacular thing. This Hoya was published in 2012 by the Bach Tran, Michele Roda and Nathaniel Simonson and it was found in Vietnam. The reason why I love it is fantastic flowers. Really, they seem unreal to me. You know, it's difficult to take a photo of Hoya flower, the close-up photo that will give it justice. There is just something about seeing them in person. I have not seen them, but I have seen really good close-up photos, and it looks stunning. It looks almost translucent, and that's the only reason why I want it. It is a thinner-leaved Hoya, so that 
kind of contributes because I'm getting more into those. But honestly, the flower is amazing. On some photos, it doesn't look as fascinating, but I do believe when once that you have it and once it blooms for you in person that it really is. Again, the price, not that terribly high, not cheap. It is slightly higher than the ones before. I saw that it can be found for around 50 euros. And you know, it's found that this will change in the future. The next one is a true rarity. And I did not find anything on this Hoya because this is unpublished species. If you know summer rain oaks, if you know summer rain oaks, have you heard about this woman on YouTube? She kind of makes plant videos, summer rain oaks, she's a small channel, three, four hundred thousand subscribers. Have you heard about her? It's just weird to say summer rain oaks. So I'm just gonna say, if you watch Summer's video, we are on first name basis. When she visited Toral Nyhaus in Sweden, who was the previous chairwoman of Swedish Hoya Society, you will see this Hoya in bloom. It is Hoya species NS 11159. So this means that this Hoya was collected in 2011 by Natalie Simonson, and it was the 159th Hoya collected that year. I did reach out to Natalie to ask for more photos and to kinda learn more about this Hoya, but Natalie's very busy and, you know, one day we will become friends, that's fine, that, that day is not today. But this Hoya really is a true rarity on this list. I think the only two people who have it are actually Toral and Natalie, and I think that this is the first year that this Hoya can be purchased as a cutting, and the price is a bit out there, it's 150 euros, which is fine. I think this price is justified considering that, you know, first of all, it is for a true collector, so it's not something that has been in circulation for a long time, and because it has silver leaves, now it costs more. So this is actual rarity. Anyways, the reason why I love this horse so much is because of the unique flowers. The flowers are gorgeous. It looks out of a dream. I just cannot even... When I saw that Hoya in the video, I knew I wanted it immediately and I will get it. I will just have to wait five years or ten, depending on how long it takes for the price to drop to something I can afford. Toral did say in Summer's video that the flowers will drop before they open, so that's a bit of a challenge and I'm not sure why that would happen. It probably depends on the environmental conditions or maybe how dry you keep it, but to know the good conditions, I will have to know where it comes from. So let's become friends, Natalie. Okay, this is too desperate. Well, it is getting darker outside, and if I knew some poetry, I would now quote a poem about sunsets or night, passing of time. The next Hoya on my list is Hoya Piestolepis, but not any Hoya Piestolepis, but clone collected by Natalie Simonson. NS11092. So this was collected in the same year, like my previous Hoya, which is amazing. Hoya Piesolepis was collected and published by Friedrich Richard Rudolf Schlechter. Really, these people with the names, it just falls right off your tongue, doesn't it? It was published in 1913 and it was found in New Guinea. Interesting facts about New Guinea. New Guinea is supposed to be the largest tropical island in the world and it is said that floristically it may be the most diverse. A lot of New Guinea remains unexplored, and it, it's fantastic, who knows what Hoyas they may find there, and it is said to be one of the most well-preserved ecosystems on the planet. Unfortunately, there is very serious deforestation going on in Papua New Guinea, and I would like to make that the topic of one of the future videos because it is very vast, it is very complex, and there are many factors that are influencing this, so, you know, it cannot be covered in a Hoya wishlist video, nor it would be fair to talk about it in Hoya wishlist video, but it is definitely something to talk about in the future. Now let's go back to Hoya Piestolepis. I think it was probably collected at the same time, like the next Hoya, and I'm not gonna tell you what the next Hoya is, but the reason why I love Hoya Piestolepis is because of the flowers. Again, it's the same color that I, I don't really know what it is. It is pearly. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep calling it pearly purple. <laughs> I don't care. 
care <laughs> what other people say. But the shape of the flower and the color of the flower are fascinating to me and I would love to have it. There are other clones of Hoya Piestulepis that are also very lovely, but currently I think getting this one might be more affordable. I'm not sure exactly what the price is. It could be anywhere between 50 and 100 euros. I think probably closer to 100 euros because I know that newer clones of Hoya Piestulepis go for a higher price. Which brings me to the next Hoya, which is Hoya Solaniflora and S12277. This is a clone collected by Natalie Simonson in 2012, and you may wonder why I'm looking for specific clones. Because they can have some different characteristics that you find more interesting, so it's actually very important to keep the accession numbers. If you buy a Hoya with accession number, keep it. If you buy a Hoya without an accession number, don't add it. Because some people want a specific clone and they want it for a specific reason. So if you add it, you may be basically tricking the, these people and selling them something that they don't really want. And also, some of the clones have a higher value. Maybe they are rarer. Maybe there are not so many of them in circulation. So it's very important just to keep accession numbers because there are people who are looking for specific ones. Anyways, back to Hoya Solaniflora. It was also published by Schlechter, and I'm not gonna even try to pronounce his name again. It was published in 1913. Hoya Solaniflora was collected in 1908, and I do think Probably at the same time Schlechter collected Hoya Piestolepis. And at the time when Hoya Solaniflora was collected, New Guinea was actually divided between the Kingdom of Netherlands, the German Empire, and the British Empire. It was collected in the part that belonged to German Empire, which is the northeastern part of New Guinea, and I think that part now is just Papua New Guinea. So that's where it was found. It was collected at elevation of 1200 meters, so it is possible that somewhere around there he also found Hoya Piestulepis, but I cannot claim that. Now, about the price, I'm again not sure how much it costs. I did find Hoya Solaniflora for around 40 euros, but considering this is a specific clone, it may cost a bit more. And th the only reason that I want it is the shape of the flower and the color. Once again, it has like white flower, but with a bit of pink towards the center. So it's not completely white and it's probably one of my most favorite flower shapes in Hoyas. It looks absolutely delicate and just, you know, that pink on the Corolla and then the yellow of the Corona, or I guess maybe it even looks translucent. I think it's just a great combination. Great job, Hoya Solaniflora. And we are close to the end of this list. This is Hoya Kari NS013064. This Hoya was validly published by Mikel Roda and Nathaniel Simonson, but the original description was by Paul Irvin Forster and David Liedl. It was collected in 1936, but I guess it wasn't validly published until 2017. Now, it was found in Papua New Guinea at elevation of around 1300 meters. This is another Hoya that I picked because of the flower. There is just something about this shape of the flower, and you will notice from the photo that it looks very similar to Hoya Solaniflora, the clone that I picked. It just seems to me from the photo that Hoya Kari might be a bit more succulent, and the flower might be a bit more succulent. I don't know if I would get both clones. I do think Hoya Kari is a bit newer in circulation, which may mean that it costs more. If Hoya Soliniflora was cheaper, I would probably go for that one because, you know, honestly, it is my favorite between the two. And we have arrived to the end. This is the last soy on the list, and it is Hoya Medinilifolia. Honestly, probably my favorite. I'm not gonna lie. And the reason why I don't think I may get this one because I hear it ships terribly. I hear it can die within, you know, days of shipping, like very short periods. And it's not very cheap. I think I saw it for around 100 euros. And all of those, you know, terrible at shipping, expensive, those are just all, all, the, all the red flags that you will need. However, the flower is absolutely out of this world gorgeous. When I saw the flower, I knew I, I, I have to have it. 
I just don't know how, <laughs> considering how expensive it is and how terrible at shipping it is. All of my Hoyas need to travel for at least a week, if not more, to get to me. And usually it's more, usually it's two weeks. <laughs> I really heard that this can die within like three days of shipping, so... I have no idea how to get it, except to learn how to teleport, teleport to Sweden, purchase a cutting, teleport back. That seems realistic, doesn't it? The flower, again, I don't know what color this is. It's like purplish blue. It seems that it's mostly white, but it has these purplish blue dots. Again, wonderful, wonderful flower. It's probably one of the most beautiful Hoya flowers that I have, I have seen. Again, not in person, but just going online and learning about Hoyas. I don't know, it, it's one of the thin-leaved Hoyas, so those are difficult sometimes to ship. Hopefully, someone near me somehow will have more courage and luck and I will be able to get it. Hoya medinillifolia was collected in 1984 by someone called Mohtar A. It was collected in the 7th division of Sarawak Batalago Plateau or Batulaga Plateau. I'm butchering it, so I'm not even going to go further. There is one more part. I think it would be just better for me to put where it was collected in, on the screen because, you know, you can butcher it at home. You don't need me to butcher the name for you. The elevation is not quite so high. It seemed to be found on 300 meters, so I think this might do well in warmer household conditions. It actually may require those in order to do well, so maybe if you have a cold home or cooler home, maybe it's not the best Hoya for you to get. If I had to pick, I think there are just tiny nuances. Like, I would put Hoya medinillifolia first, but then just not even a full spot below Hoya Thuathian Huensis, and then the rest of it, I just, it's not even like first spot, second spot, it's like first spot, then 1.1. <laughs> I just love all of them. That's what I'm trying to say. Hopefully, I will be able to get some of them in the years to come, when the prices drop, when they become more available. So, I hope that I expanded your Hoya wish list. Let me know down in the comments below which of these is your favorite, which of them did you add to your wish list, and did you know about them? I'm interested to know about all of those. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, let me know which Hoya you like. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Bye. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A big shout out to my $10 tier, which is not really my $10 tier, but you know what you did. <laughs> thank you so much, Spinach Geek and Danub Daniels, for your generous support. I would also like to thank my $5 patrons. Again, a big shout out for Alina Coddington, two times. Thank you so much for your support. Also, a big thank you to my other five tier patrons Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Dinsla, Hoyas and Whatnots, Kelsey Jager, Mars B, Mary, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Nerdy Kathy, awesome name, Tanya, Vicky Dingler, Tom Ibbotson, and Zlokov Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons Angelina Farnan, Becca Panyar, Brianna Phillips, Catherine G. Jerry's Garden, Carrie Cactus, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nikki, and Ringlov. And thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline, Frihetina Ask, and Hasenta. You have a Q&A that you need to check if you haven't. Thank you all so much for your support. You're truly wonderful and you are all amazing. My thank you to you is giving you this Hoya wish list so you can spend more money on Hoyas. I'm terrible. I hope everyone is well and it's time for Miro to shut up and go bye.